There is a design strategy that it seems 99.9% .9 of Etsy sellers seem to stick with. If you are not making the sales that you had hoped to make this Q4 or in your shop in general, then this is the video for you because we're going to identify that design strategy and we don't want to stay there. It's a beginning level design strategy where most of us begin, but we need to graduate from that. I'm gonna show you two ways to deepen your designs that will help you add value to the market add something different to the market and get people to stop scrolling and take notice of your designs because everybody else's designs are going to look similar and yours is going to look different. I am filming this video at the beginning of November, so we're in the middle of Q4, but I will tell you that no matter what time of year you happen to stumble across this video, if you are having a hard time with designing or, and your designs look a little like everyone else's and you're not getting the traction that you want to get, this video is going to be a must watch for you. I'm really going to focus on how to, in a very simple way, up your game with your designs. It is not going to be a difficult thing for you to start applying in your own designing and in your own listings. We are going to be using Christmas listings as our example because right now there's a lot of Christmas bestsellers out there for me to pull from. This strategy can be applied to any niche during any time of the year. In my last video, this one here, I mentioned that this design video was coming up next. If you are looking for some encouragement and you want some more tips on how to have a successful Q4 and your October didn't go the way you had hoped and you're needing some advice about that and some direction with that, then I suggest listening to this one next. I will link it at the end. Don't give up. There is space for you here on Etsy. There is a lot of money to be made during the Q4 months. You just have to figure out how to make things that people want to buy. So let's jump into it. Let's focus on that today. How are we going to make things that people want to buy? First things first, we need to pick the niche that we're going to be designing in. We are going to be designing in Christmas. We're not going to design anything that's generic though, that just has a Christmas tree or says Merry Christmas on it. We need to niche down. I'm going to niche us down into the category of family Christmas. Now we're going to niche down further than that, but you might need some more ideas. So you could go straight over to Etsy and you could type into the search bar, family Christmas shirts. You'll start to see lots of different ideas. If you did this for 15, 20 minutes and just jotted down all of the categories that you're kind of seeing popping up, you would see a bunch. I'm just gonna spit out a couple for you to kind of get you going and to get you to the one that we're gonna dig deeper into. But this is a good activity to sit and do with any niche that you're working in to give you ideas of all of these little subcategories that you can hit. With just looking for a couple minutes, we're gonna see very quickly that the last name, the personalized, shirt like that, bunches and bunches of bestsellers like that, shirts with the year on them, that would sell as a group to a family or to an office of people. You could do the family name and the year on it as well. You're gonna see a bunch with different phrases on each shirt. And this could go now into lots of different other subcategories. This one that I'm showing you is the I don't do matching series here, lots of different ways to tackle that, but this is just one of so many different ways to do different phrases on each shirt. We've got most likely to, there's going to be gobs and gobs of bestsellers of those. And we're going to do a deeper dive into this one, the initial or monogram shirt, where we've got a big letter and then we've got a personalized name underneath that letter. Now we can take a peek at the SEO, the, the title and the tags that were used in these listings to do additional searches so we can get an idea of what designs are already out there and what they're looking like. So I noticed that in a lot of these, the word initial was used or monogram. So I'm gonna do some additional searches of initial Christmas family shirts and then I'm gonna sort by best sellers and I'm going to take a look at those results. I found dozens and dozens of bestsellers with this subcategory. And so you might be thinking, oh, but Shauna, that means there's too much competition. Yes, there's a lot of competition. However, that means because there's so many bestsellers, there is a lot of demand for that and there are a lot of shoppers looking for that. And we're going to notice something very specific in this as we start looking at the results. I'm gonna point it out to you in a minute. Most of the results 
are people staying right in that beginner level design strategy, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. And so there's a lot of opportunity to make better designs that are going to stand out in this particular niche. And for anyone out there thinking, but I'm a new shop, I'm not gonna be able to compete with that. This is my first year. I used Everbe, which is an app that gives you a lot more information about how well a listing is doing, exactly what all of their tags are. It is a paid app. I love it. I do have a link to it down below in the description if you want to play with it. There is a free version that you can play with first. But that's what I'm using to pull this information that I'm about to show you, a little recon on this listing. If you are thinking that you are a new shop and that you can't compete, take a look at this. This listing is only two months old and it already has a bestseller on it. It's not from last year, it's from this year, just two months old. And then if we take a look at how old the shop is, the shop is only two months old. So this is a brand new shop and this is one of their very first listings. And on top of that, in just a second, I'm gonna show you that they stayed at the base level, the basic design level here, and they were still able to get that bestseller. Where there is a will, there is a way. Do not tell yourself that you cannot do this or that there is not space for you. There is space for you, you can do this, and you can stand out in the market and you can make sales. You just have to keep going and not give up. You have to figure out how to make things people wanna buy before you give up. Before we start designing, we're gonna go take a look at a bunch of listings that we're competing with. And all of these listings stayed right at the basic design level. I want you to see if you could figure out what that basic design level is. So we're gonna take a look. We see a big plaid letter, Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers. We've got some lights tangled in the antlers, name underneath. Big white letter, Santa Claus hat, and some reindeer antlers. And we've got some bulbs hanging from this one. Big white letter, Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers with some more bulbs. Another big letter, Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers. Here we've got a font that looks different. Green letter, kind of green plaid. Red Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers. Varsity letter with a Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers. Here we've got long sleeves, so it's a little different than the rest of the shirts that I was seeing on the market. But again, we've got a big letter. This time it's cut in the middle. That seemed to be the two types of designs I was seeing, either the name underneath or the name cut in the middle with a cutout like that. Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers. Once again, Santa Claus hat, reindeer antlers. Some fun embellishments on this one with the lights and the dripping down the sides of the letters there. 99.9% .9 of Etsy sellers, myself included the entire first year that I was designing in my Etsy shop. And if you know my story, you know I had a slow go of it that first year is to make designs that look a lot like everyone else's. So your first inclination might be, oh, I see a lot of white letters. That must mean that it needs to be a big white letter. I'm gonna use a big white letter. I'll find a cool font. Maybe I'll use a retro font because that's trending right now. So I'll, I'll use a big white letter and Surely I need to use a Santa Claus hat and some cool reindeer antlers. I'll try to find the coolest Santa Claus hat and the coolest reindeer antlers. And then you go make something that looks a whole lot like everybody else's. And the design strategy that's just a tiny smidge above this one is to have an understanding of, oh, well, there's already a bunch like that. So I'm going to do a very similar listing, right? I'm going to have my big letter that's kind of a very important part of this type of design. I'm gonna have my big letter, and maybe I'll put a Santa Claus hat on it, but I'm going to use a different font. So I'm sure many of you know Creative Fabrica. That's my favorite place to go get fonts. We are gonna to go to Creative Fabrica to help us with some of our designs today so that we can stand out in the market. I do have a link to them down in the description below too, which will get you some freebies when you sign up. They are fantastic. I use a lot of my clip art from Canva and from Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica specifically has a lot of cool fonts. So the next level of designing here is to go, oh, well, I'm gonna find a really cool font, a font that looks like candy canes or an elf font or some other really cool font. But in the end, your design is going to look very similar to what's already out there. The big letter with the name underneath. 
That's what most people are doing. That's what most of the designs look like. Now, okay, before I tell you what we're gonna do next, kind of be thinking, well, how can I do this different? If you don't have any ideas, keep thinking before I show you how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to take this in some new directions. I am going to use some of the other ideas that I saw while I was doing Christmas shirt searches. I'm gonna infuse those ideas into this niche. And the masses are not doing that. I encourage you after this video to go look for yourself. You'll find just a small pocket of creative pe people that have taken this a step further. And if you're not there yet into that place where you're taking this a step further, that's okay. You just don't know how to do that yet. I didn't know how to do that my first year. It took time for me to understand this. We're gonna break the levels of design into three design levels, we'll call it. That first level is the one we just identified. You're just regurgitating what you've already seen and your design winds up looking very similar. Perhaps we could break that into two parts, very much just making what you're already seeing and then maybe trying to stand out in some way a little bit. We saw some people putting on a long sleeve so they try to stand out in that way. And then we talked about you might go with a totally different type of font that you're not seeing a lot of people using, and maybe that's the difference that you're trying to use to make yours look different. But now we're going to take this into a deeper level. I went ahead and put a bunch of designs together at this second level to show you some different examples. I'm going to niche down further. And you can do this with a lot of different examples, different niches. I'm Stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you another example of a whole different niche. Uh, that you could use this strategy with. Right now, we're going to niche down. Most people are sticking with the letter and a Santa Claus hat and reindeer antlers. That's where most people are staying. Again, you'll find a handful of people when you go do this research for yourself that did something different, but the majority of people are staying right there with the antlers and the Santa Claus hat. But there are gobs and gobs of other directions that you can take completely different directions. Specifically for Christmas, I do like to use, and I, I do this with other holidays as well. This strategy works specifically well for holidays, but with my teacher background and thinking about word searches and doing like a fun word search at the beginning of each, you know, the, as morning work for our holidays, I go and I look up a word search for the holiday and I get tons of ideas for different niches that I can do. One kind of little quick creative hack that you might like to. So when I'm looking at this word search, what's coming to mind, I see the word stocking and that makes me think, oh my gosh, that would be kind of cool to make a big letter on the stocking and then write the full name in like the white fluff of the top of the stocking. I see reindeer on this list. We know we've already got gobs of antlers, reindeer antlers. So uh, if I think of something totally different for that, maybe I'll revisit it. I see the word nutcracker. Maybe I could think of a way to incorporate a nutcracker into my design. That's a popular Christmas character. When I do feel like I'm running out of ideas, I start looking at word searches and I start looking at these words that are related to whatever I am designing in. And that helps get my creative ideas going again. I invite you to jump in here with me and we're gonna take a deeper look at how we can make our designs different. We're going to be infusing ideas that maybe we picked up from something like a word search, something that was giving us some creative different directions to look into. And we're also gonna mix that with what we are seeing when we type in Christmas family shirts on Etsy into that more broad category, what other elements are we seeing or other sub niches similar to the ones that we noticed on the word search, for example. Here we are on Etsy and you will find a lot of designs that are focused on you serious Clark with this kind of fun hat. I'd stay away from movie phrases. You're not completely safe there. However, I would use this hat that kind of is a super popular element. You'll find that in a lot of designs, and I think a lot of people recognize it as an element from the movie. And let's make some designs with that in mind. And I didn't see anyone doing this yet. So here I made a couple. I also brought in the year into my designs, and I also brought the words Christmas crew into my designs and I thought this would be a nice different look. Once I had it on my mock-up, I felt like the red really kind of got lost, so I did it again with the white letters underneath instead. I did the words in kind of a, a cursive across the letters. I do want to point out that the cursive name across the letters did come out a little hard to read there in the green, but I 
felt like it still worked because the letter was really bold and that seemed to be the main focus in all of these other best-selling designs. And the personalized name was oftentimes in cursive. So this might be a stab I would take at this. I didn't do all my designs up like this. And you could even do a couple of versions with this style in mind to see if one got more traction than, than the other. Maybe something with a bolder font that stood out more if you found something that you liked better. We're gonna go gingerbread this time. I've seen a lot of really well-selling gingerbread Christmas-themed designs across all kinds of Christmas niches. As I did research the initials, I maybe saw one or two people try a gingerbread cookie type of font but I didn't see anyone do it up the way we're doing it up here. I also added family Christmas underneath and the year. So with most of mine, instead of just the letter and the name, I tried to incorporate family Christmas as I saw that that is so popular across so many shirts and the year to personalize it even further. Here it is on our mock-up and you know, th sometimes things don't look on your mock-up the way you think they're gonna look while you're designing. And once you get it on the mock-up, it's not as bold as you thought it might be. This, I thought the colors came out a little bit better. Wasn't sure how much I loved the 2023, but I will tell you this. When I'm designing, I when I go to put it on the mock-up, if I can make a quick change, if I can identify something quickly and go, oh, I need to do this and it's gonna make it better, then great, I do that before I finish mocking everything up and you know putting it in my shop. However, if I can't identify something quickly, I'm not gonna let this stand in my way from getting my item listed. If I didn't love the way it came out of my mock-up, I'm taking note of, oh, I wish that it was a little, I wish daddy was a little bolder there, or I wish I could see 2023 there, I'm not sure I love the green. I'll keep that in mind as I'm making my next design, but don't let that ruin your momentum or keep you from getting it listed. If you spent 20 minutes making something and you can't make a quick adjustment and get it up anyways, then go ahead and list it the way you had it. You're going to learn something from this process. You're gonna keep your momentum going, which is so important that, it's important that we get our momentum going in Etsy, but it's equally as important that we keep our own personal momentum swinging forward. Otherwise we don't have growth and we don't learn and we don't get, we don't get ourselves somewhere. This next example, use it at your own discretion. The Grinch hands are very popular. You'll see a lot of designs where the Grinch hands are making a heart or it's holding something. So in this next one, I did incorporate that element because no one was really doing that in this niche. However, I don't know that I'd feel comfortable putting that in my shop. I would definitely not use the word Grinch in my title or my tags anywhere. Certainly wouldn't use the Grinch face, but the Grinch hand is recognizable as the Grinch. It is branded like everyone knows that that's the Grinch hand. So I think it kind of covered the, the example for the purpose of showing you an example of how to incorporate trending elements. I think it did that here, but I'm also not suggesting that you use the Grinch hand in your designs. I think that it's safer than using the Grinch face or writing the word Grinch on a shirt, but I still think that it could get you into trouble. I grabbed this ornament element from Creative Fabrica. I also found this, this Grinch hand on Creative Fabrica and I put them together and made them look like the Grinch hand was holding that ornament up and then we put the letter with the name inside there. Another way we could go with this is to add 2023 going maybe down the sleeve, that little white cuff of the sleeve if we wanted to add the year. Now while I wouldn't use this and that's kind of a bummer, right? Like to notice an element and then not be able to use it. Thinking about this led me to my next idea. Skeletons are a really popular niche and you can cross niche them with just about anything. They're not just popular at Halloween, surprisingly so. Try mixing the concept of skeleton into any of the niches that you're working in, any evergreen niches that you're working in, see what happens. Here we're going to use that skeleton hand and it's going to be holding the ornament. I tried to improve the design this time by dropping that personalized word out of the ornament where it was winding up kind of small in the last set that I did. So this time I dropped that word underneath the ornament and it's a little bit bolder, it's a little bit bigger and a little easier to read this time. So we've got our skeleton hand holding the ornament and then I, at first I just had it like this and I thought it was a little bit plain. So I added some snowflakes around the ornament. So I'll just remind you again right now that your momentum is important. 
Do not let something stop you and you're sitting there trying to get it just perfect. Let the next design be a little bit better than the last. Always be doing that and your designs are just going to get better and better and your forward movement and your momentum will continue to swing forward. By the time I was on this design, I could have easily still been working on the first design going, oh, I need to get this word just right or it's not visible enough. There's always going to be something that you want to improve. So keep your momentum going, make your next design better than the last, but don't get stuck trying to make any one design absolutely perfect. That will just slow you down too much. In just a moment, we're going to get to that third level, that deeper level of design strategy that's going to help you stand out even more. I hope you're seeing the value of these designs and how different they are than what was already there. So remember our first level was just kind of pumping out something very similar to what we already see, making some minor changes. This second level is actually adding something different to the market by sub-niching into an area that a lot of people weren't doing yet or by adding other trending elements that we're seeing in other designs across the broader niche of Christmas. I am just gonna take one quick second to invite you to subscribe if you are enjoying this content and you feel like it's going to help you improve your Etsy shop, improve your design strategy, so you'll get to join us the next time we do a video like this. And I'm also going to invite you to boop the like button if you are already subscribed and you're enjoying this content. That helps communicate to me that the audience that we're building here is enjoying content like this and it helps me to plan future content for you. All right, our last two directions that I went with this I did religion, so I've got the cross there, which is a great one to use at Christmas time, obviously. So, and I didn't see anyone really doing this with the monogram initial category. I didn't see anyone pulling this in there. And I, I looked back pages and pages, so definitely worth a stab in my opinion. And this last example here is the little peekaboo reindeer. Now we already know that the Santa hat with the reindeer antlers was doing really well. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't try that, but honestly I wouldn't because I've done that so many times and it seems like you have to be lucky to break through the market if yours looks like everyone else's because there's so many people, only a few people are going to get bestsellers on a design that looks the same as everyone else's while everyone else kind of falls to the wayside. So we know that that shop from the beginning that I showed you was only two months old and they got a bestseller. So if you wanna try it, go for it. Personally, I wouldn't. I would maybe do something like this. Here, I still have the reindeer, but he's different. He's peeking around. I might drape these letters in some fun Christmas lights before posting it, but just as a quick thought, I'm showing you this. Another one that didn't quite make the cut in the period of time I was giving myself to do these designs for this video was, I was thinking a tasty cake. If you look, if you've done your research for your Christmas niches, you probably keep seeing this design popping up with a the little tasty cake. And that could be a fun design for this too with a tasty cake sitting next to the letter. I don't see anyone doing that yet. I spent a day pretty much doing this. I could literally have put 20 more examples into this video. 30 more, 40 more. The more ideas you look at, the more ideas you're going to get, the more ideas that you start getting down in your design app, the more ideas you're just going to keep coming up with. We're going to take this one level deeper. And for this one, we're going to add a funny phrase. So in this niche, no one's really doing that. All they're doing is putting the letter and the name. If you are working in a niche and you see an opportunity to add a funny phrase that no one's using or to add a funny phrase at all, then go for it. This is precisely how I was able to get my bestseller that first Christmas, that listing that made me the $6,000. I simply looked at the designs that were already selling in that niche. I had been working in that niche for a while, kind of like this. I wouldn't do one set of initial letters and then move on to something else. I, I like to work in the same space for a while because my designs get better and better and more and more competitive. So my first design is not going to be as good as my 30th design. So I like to work in the same spaces for a bit of time. Back on the computer here, we're going to grab this font right out of Creative Fabrica. And we're also going to grab a cute gnome. And then we're going to go over to Kittle and make our design. I just dragged and dropped the letter and the gnome into Kittle, and now I'm going to drag it on our artboard. I'm going to go a different direction than I was originally going to go. We're going to, I was going to use the phrase, naughty and I gnome it. And as I'm sitting here, I want to use naughty and we gnome it and make this the last letter of the family name. 
I'm telling you right now that I already filmed the end of this video. I don't have time to go back and refilm it. And I mentioned this as an idea. So it's going to sound redundant in a moment when I mention this as an idea. But I, with the phrase naughty and I know it, switching it to naughty and we know it, I couldn't help myself. So that's what I want to do right now. So we've got our big J here. We've got our gnome. Again, this is our next design level. And now we are going to pull in a funny phrase. So I just hit add headline and now I'm going to write the family name Johnson. And I'm just kind of playing with this. I want it to stretch right across the artboard and I'm going to place it under the letter. And then we'll play with the font a little bit. I've played with the fonts and there's a whole bunch of fonts on Kittle that you can use. I'm going to go with be happy. I thought this was really playful looking and I feel like the gnome is playful and the phrase we're going to use is playful. So I thought that might work nicely together. And I'm also going to add the words underneath. I'm just trying to get it centered here and you can use these little icons to help you get things centered depending on what you want to press here. I just got it centered toward the end, you know, the middle of the artboard. So, you can play with these buttons, but here we have it underneath and we'll get it kind of centered there. You can do it by eye as well. It's what I often do, but I was playing with those buttons today. I thought those were great. And now we're going to add another text line, add headline, and I'm going to write family crew underneath. I'd like to bring that in because a lot of the family shirts have family crew on somewhere on the shirt. It's a really popular element. I think this is going to be a really good stab with this being that we're mixing the big letter with all of these other elements or actually let's do with family Christmas. We're doing family Christmas. So Johnson family Christmas with our big J. And now we want to add that funny line and that's how we're really going to stand out with this. We've niched down to gnome. So let's do some funny puns. You could actually go search Google. That's how I get a lot of my puns and you will have no shortage of hysterical puns you can use. So we're going to do naughty and we know it. I'm going to add a headline. If you're looking to get yourself a good design app, I will leave a link to Kittle down in the description. Some of the things I really love about it are the fact that you can do shaped text and you can do curved text and wavy text really easily. So, I'm going to go ahead and blow this up a little bit and then I'm going to show you how we can curve it, which is super easy with Kittle to do. I'm just going to kind of enlarge this here a little bit. Let's get our be happy. I like to kind of stick with just two fonts. Every once in a while I'll use a third. So we've kind of got our graphic font here, that letter, you know, the big, the big J and then I'm sticking with the be happy font with everything else. I could have used a second font here with everything else, but I'm liking this. It looks very uniform. It looks together. So I do like the way this is coming out. Once I have this centered, here we go right there in the middle. We're going to go down here. Let's get rid of this layers thing. So the other menu pops up. Let's select the text and I'm going to select circle. And now I can adjust it. Uh, I don't really like it touching the J there. So I'm going to adjust it here by grabbing this little circle and I can pull it out and it kind of just moves everything. And then I can reposition it. And I'm just going to press the arrow arrow. I'm just going to press the arrow button for a second and get it just in the right spot. So with a design like this, I would, when I mock it up, I would show it with maybe a couple different examples of family names and then maybe a big C where it says custom name underneath or something like that. But families will kind of, people when they're looking for these kinds of shirts, they'll understand that they can customize it. Some other ways to mix and match this with some other things that are going well on Etsy and to really stand out in the market, the shirts that have the last name, the last family name, like Johnson Family Christmas, so popular. Why not do these letters up and then for the entire family, let's say it's a big J and Johnson is, you know, cursive through the letter, family Christmas at the bottom. And then the entire family is wearing the same design, which actually makes it a lot easier for you to fulfill because you're not doing so much personalization. I think that has a chance to do really well. Maybe doing another design up. There's a, the, the pocket designs are super popular. Maybe doing the letter 
for the pocket and then doing a big family crew design for the back of the shirt. That would be another way to really stand out from the market. It is endless. There is so much potential here. And we're just talking about this one niche right now. This is true of so many spaces and places on Etsy. I'm going to give you three pieces of homework right now. One, I'd like you to jump down into the comments and let us know which design we came up with today that you think has the best chance to stand out in the market. Two, I want you to apply what we've talked about today. If you're already working in a niche and you've got your wheels cranking and you already are seeing some opportunities on how to apply it to that niche, then great. If not, then maybe do up a letter design like we were doing today. And if you're not into group or family, that's a little too much for you right now, then you might try it with the Chestnuts Couples shirts. This is another big one where it's the same designs over and over again. A lot of just white designs on a red and a green shirt, or maybe the same like Grinch type graphics or ornament and wreath type graphics on each of the shirts. There is a lot of potential right here in this niche to apply the strategies we were just talking about. And three, to watch this video next. But of course, not until after that tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away.